Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video we're going to look at how you can dynamically change the theme of your app. This means changing the colors and other objects of all items to match a theme at the click of a button. Now before I get started, if you're enjoying the video, please leave a comment below and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of new videos. So if this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. Now, if you want to follow along, I suggest that you download the starter app that I've linked to in the description below. We'll be creating some structs and a service that you'll be able to use in any app. The sample app is very basic. The content view has a navigation bar and two buttons and a scroll view with some text. A color theme has been applied using two shades of purple and these colors change slightly between light and dark mode. The modal sheet button displays a modal sheet and it's here that we'll be placing three buttons that will allow us to change the theme from this purple one. The push navigation button will push a new view onto the navigation stack. Notice that for each of the views, the navigation bar has the same theme as do the buttons and text. To apply the current theme to the navigation bar, we've had to invoke a UI navigation bar appearance class. And I recently did a video on this, so if you haven't already viewed it, I'd recommend that you do. A link is in the description below. I've included with this project a view modifier that was used in this video, and we apply the modifier here in content view, passing in some named colors. These named colors are what you will find in the theme colors folder. The currently applied theme is this one here that has three different named colors. The remaining two sets aren't used yet. And that's what the purpose of this video is all about. How can we easily switch between themes and also make sure that the navigation bar is also changed? One last thing to note is that I've also created a button modifier that allows me to have a consistent look to all of my buttons and that I can pass in my named colors for the foreground and background colors. So everywhere that you see a button, I also apply this style. So how do we go about implementing this? I'm going to be creating three themes. So the first thing I, I want to do is to make sure that all of my themes will all have the same properties. So before I create my model, I'm going to create a protocol that my themes are going to have to conform to. First though, select the theme colors asset and right click on them and choose Create Group from Selection, and name the group Themes. Inside that group, create a new Swift file called Themes. Change the import to UIKit, and create a new protocol and call it Theme. For the protocol, we can define four properties that we want to have for all of our themes. Three of them will be UI colors, and the fourth will be a string. The three colors will represent our named colors and will have a getter only. The fourth will be a string representing our theme name. So we can call our color properties primary color, secondary color, and label color. And for the string, I've just called it theme name. Next, we can create a file called Theme Definitions. Again, change the import to UIKit. And within that file, create three structs, all of them conforming to the theme protocol. One will be called Theme 1, another one Theme 2, and the third Theme 3. Now, Xcode complains because none of your structs conform to our theme protocol. And you can fix that either by choosing to fix each one of them individually, or you can go to the editor menu and choose fix all issues. But notice that there's a keyboard shortcut for this. Control, Option, Command, F. So if I use those four keys on my keyboard, it inserts all of the properties into our structs. 
Now we'll need to assign the appropriate values. For our colors, we can use the name colors in our assets and make sure that we force unwrap each one of them. If our app crashes, we'll know that we have mistyped, so we can correct it before we submit to the App Store. For each of these colors, our name color is prefixed with the theme number followed by a dash and then a capitalized name that is the same name as our property, like this. For the theme name, that's the string. So the first one we can use theme one. And our completed theme now looks like this. Since we're using that structure for all three, I can just copy and paste it into the other two of our themes and change the prefix and the theme name accordingly. Now the last thing that we need to do in our theme group is to create an enum with a static function that will help us access each of our themes and its properties. So I'm going to create a new file called theme manager. And inside I'll create an enum of the same name. Inside the enum I'll create a static constant called themes that's an array of objects all conforming to the theme protocol. And I'll initialize it with instances of all three of our themes. Now, still within our enum, I'll create a function called getTheme that has a single int parameter called theme, and that returns a theme. And then inside the body of the function, I can return the corresponding theme from the themes array at the index specified by theme. We can use self.themes to access the theme manager's themes property using self.themes at theme. We are going to want to be able to access our theme from anywhere in our app. So we'll create an observable object that we can initialize on the app startup and inject it into the environment. So create a new file called data source and change the import to Swift UI. We're going to be storing our selected theme index in user defaults using the app storage property wrapper. So we'll need Swift UI for that. Create a class called data source that conforms to the observable object protocol. And inside that class, create an app publish property called selected theme that is of type theme. And let's initialize it with an instance of theme one. Now we've made this a published property because we eventually want to be able to switch themes. We will do this later in code, but for testing purposes, once we've modified our views to access the selected theme colors instead of the fixed ones that we have now, we can manually change the theme to see if our views are updated accordingly. Now in our theme changer Swift file, where our app starts, we'll add an instance of data source to the environment like this. This means then that we have access to select a theme wherever we access the environment. So in each of our three views, add the following property to the top, an environment object, called data source that is of type data source. Now in all three views, we'll be able to access the data source dot selected theme name color and replace all of our ones in our views that are the static ones. In content view, there are four of them and make sure that you replace them with the corresponding theme color property. So for the first one here, that would be data source dot selected theme dot label color. So let me copy this so that I have this on my clipboard now and I'll replace the next two with their corresponding versions, just changing that last component. Now be careful with the appearance modifier one here though. This time we need to replace the entire UI color instance with just the properties because it is a UI color.
Let's repeat that process for the remaining two views now. In modal sheet view, there's only one. In destination view, we've got three. Let's return to content view now and preview. To, so we'll go to the live preview to test out our app. We're getting an error, however, when we try to run the preview. And when I check the error, I see that we need to add in our data source as an environment object for the preview. So we'll do that here just as we did in our theme changer file. And we should also repeat this for the other two views. Back in content view, I see that it's working just fine. Nothing's changed. We still have that purple theme. Let's return now to the data source and change our theme instance to one of theme two. If we build our app and then return to content view and, and refresh our preview, we'll see that our views are updated to that new color theme. Make sure that you test out every one of your themes to see that we haven't mistyped any of our colors. This is all looking pretty good now. We just have to make sure that we can initiate this from the user point of view. So all we'll need to do is add three buttons to our modal sheet view that'll allow us to update our theme. So let's go back to the data source now then and add in a new property that's an app storage property. And we'll give it the key name selected theme. And we can assign that to a variable called selected theme AS for app storage. And we'll initialize it with a value of one. Now, each time we change this property, it will get stored in our user defaults with the selected theme key. At this point then, we'll also want to update the theme by setting our at publish property to the corresponding theme. So let's create a new function that we'll call update theme. In the body then, we can set selected theme to the theme that we get by calling our theme managers get theme function passing in the value of selected theme AS. Ah, I see I'm getting an error here because when I created that function in theme manager, I forgot to make it a static function. So let me go back and fix that now. Ah, yeah, it builds fine now. Now, every time we update selected theme AS, we want to call that function. So we can do that by adding a did set property observer to our app storage property that will execute the function. Now this only executes when it gets set, not on initialization. So one more thing that we need to do is to make sure that when the data source is initialized, it updates our theme with the current value of selected AS. We are now ready to add our buttons to our modal sheet view. I'm going to do this in a for each loop that counts from zero up to the number of themes that we have in our theme manager, which is the static property for the theme manager dot themes. Let's do that right before the spacer. And since each of these themes are unique for our ID, we'll just use dot self. theme here is our index. So within the for each loop, then let's create a button that will use that array index called theme, its theme name as the title. And then for the action, we can assign the index that theme to our app storage variable, then dismiss the view by calling the presentation mode environment variables dismiss method on its wrap value. And then as a final touch, why don't we style the buttons using our theme colors? And we can use the filled rounded corner button style that I have provided for you. Now, all I want to use are the background and foreground color properties. 
The other defaults that I have specified in the view modifier will suffice. So for the BG color, we'll use the theme's primary color. And for the foreground color, we'll use the secondary color. Time to test. You may be surprised and disappointed in the results, however. Let's run in the simulator. Launching it gives us our first theme as expected. No problem. Let's tap on the modal sheet and select a different theme. Notice that the modal view closes the inner content changes theme, but not the navigation bar on the content view, nor on the navigation destination view. It still has that first theme color. The modal sheet appears to be okay. Same thing happens if we test that other theme. Both the content view and the destination navigation view don't get their navigation bar appearance changed. Now if I exit and launch the application, the theme was remembered, so we're okay there. And in this case, all of my views look good, including the navigation bar. So how can we get that navigation bar changed when we tap the button? Well, that's what's next. The reason is that our navigation bar is part of UIKit, and refreshing our views won't refresh the properties of the navigation bar appearance. It's one level above our view, so to speak. So in order to fix this, we'll need to be able to kill the view and reload the view with a new navigation view. I posed this question on Stack Overflow because I wasn't sure how to do this in Swift UI. I've done it in UIKit, but not here. And I received an answer from SwiftPunk. So as always, I feel it's my obligation to give credit where credit is due. He is able to steer me in the right direction. So this is what I came up with. The solution is to create a new file that becomes the root of our application. And in that, I'll check to see if our selected theme has changed. So we'll create a new Swift UI file. And I'm going to call it wrapper view. Now I'll need to access my data source, so let's access that from the environment. And then to keep Xcode happy, we'll add an instance of data source to the environment for our preview. Now I'm going to simply create a for each loop like we did in our modal sheet view that we created our buttons in. And then what we'll do is we'll check to see in this loop whether or not the theme name has been changed to the selected theme name. If so, it's going to refresh our content view. Now, if we want this to be our first view, we'll need to return to theme changer file and change the initial view from content view to wrapper view. Let's run the app now. Let's change the theme. This time, the navigation bar changes as expected for all of our views. If we stop and rerun the app, we see that our theme has been remembered. Mission accomplished. Now there's one more thing I want to mention before I leave you. If you watch my video on customizing the navigation bar, you'll find that I had called my modifier the navbar appearance modifier. Here I've just called it appearance modifier. Why? Well, because if you're modifying the appearance of any other UI kit properties, you can make those changes here as well. And then switching themes will work nicely. I hope you found this video useful. And if you find my videos helpful and you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. Thanks for watching.